Welcome to the first episode of BFD, Brewing, Fermenting, Distilling. I am your producer, Jack, and our new host will be on air in a few seconds, and she will be guiding you through the first of hopefully many episodes on how to brew beer. Today's episode is a German Rolsch beer. And with that, I am turning the camera over to our lovely host of the show, Ellen Barnes. Ellen, you're on air. I am? I can't tell. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, well, welcome. As Jack said, we're going to start um, and show you some of the just basics of brewing a, a very simple recipe. This is... This is a Klosch. It's a German beer. Um, it is an ale, so we're not too overly concerned. When you get into different types of beers, whether it's an, if it's an ale or a lager, you need to be careful about temperature. Lagering requires a cooler environment by which to um, ferment. So um, since we're in sunny California and it's still somewhat the warm days of summer, it's easier to do an ale at this time of year. So um, I'm trying to figure out the easiest. I'm still learning the system here. Some of the ingredients that we'll be working with, and I'm going to show it to you. Jack, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I'm also, I've got a broadcast issue at this end. Nothing's going right today. Go ahead. Am I, okay. You're broadcasting. I, I can't see what I'm showing, so. <laughs> In terms of um, the ingredients that we're using, we're using seven, uh, seven and a half pounds of cloche grain, Included in this bag is a mix of that, a pound of red wheat, and a three quarters pound of dunkin. So those are the grains that we're going to be mashing, and we're mashing to name. We're not using extracts. And what the difference is is if you get into start brewing, you can grab one. You can do mashing, which is what I'm doing here, which is an all grain approach, or you can actually buy malts, and this is what uh, one would look like. And it's almost like a really thick syrup. Um, and you buy the different flavors depending on the type of beer that you're going to be brewing, and you don't have to go through the process we're going to go through today. So, those are our grains. The next below here are the hops, and we have two different types of hops you're, you're usually working with with a beer. You've got a bittering or a flavoring hops, and then you have an aromatic hops. Um, and in this particular case, well, when we later today we'll get to the hops because you're going to have to do a little bit of math in terms of calculating how much do you put into a standard recipe. Now the thing with beer, it's great. We can follow the recipe directly and, and get a very good product, or I know there's a lot of hop heads out there that would probably dump in pounds of this stuff. I'm not a hop head, but I'm just saying that you have the opportunity to adjust your, your, your hop flavors or your bitterness based upon what your preference is. And then the final ingredient that we're working with, this is basically what goes into beer, is your yeast. And this yeast is a particular strain designed for the Kolosh beer. So right now it is coming up to room temperature, so I'm letting it sit for a bit. The first part of a mashing process is your water, and so we've got our we've got our brewing kettle here. I've added two gallons of water to it, and for this first stage, for this particular recipe, and I'm going to follow the recipe fairly closely, is to to bring the temperature of the water up to 122 and to hold it at this temperature. Um, we're going to include the grains, and we're going to hold it at this temperature for 20 minutes. That's the first step we need to go through. And I've been playing around prior to getting online, and we are at 122 degrees, and I've been able to hold it at 122 degrees um, at this point in time. So we're going to go ahead and add in our grains. The delicate way that I do it. All total, that's about eight pounds of grains. 
and so it's pretty much just like making oatmeal. And so what we want to do is we want to stir them around a bit. We want to get them just all of them soaking in the water as best we can. And again, we're going to maintain the grains at this temperature for about 20 minutes. <coughs> at which point, what we'll do next is we raise the temperature, I believe, to about 148 degrees. And we'll hold it at 148 degrees for about 90 minutes. After which time, then what we're going to do is pull off the grains from the water to sparging process, putting it into a fermenter. Oh, sorry, we add our hops first. Then we will put it into the fermenter, add the yeast, cap it, and we're good to go. So at this point in time, we just need to wait another 20 minutes, monitor the temperature, maintain it at 122 degrees, and then we'll pick it up at, at, in about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, we will set the camera up and leave it on while I try to get the HD working. We're in lowest res, not in HD. Okay. Well, the one thing with growing beer, I'm on there, right? Yes, you're on air. All right. One thing to keep in mind in brewing beer is cleanliness is incredibly highly, 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 highly important. Um, anything that comes into contact with the wort, and that will be the wonderful juices that we get that is the combination of the water and the grains. Um, any utensils, anything that comes into it needs to not only be cleaned, it needs to be sanitized. And so, Again, cleanliness is something that um, you spend the majority of your time doing when you're brewing. It's cleaning and sanitizing. All right, I managed to have that bag perfectly positioned to walk here. Yeah, don't for justice. Talk about the history of brewing. Okay, okay. This live broadcast isn't broadcasting in, in high definition for some reason. Uh, we will be taking the stream off air for a few minutes while I try to improve the quality of, of your view. Thank you. 